I'm, uh, I'm uh, Nathan uh, Watimena. I'm uh, the uh, uh, I'm uh, Nathan Watimena. I'm the product owner for um, uh, for the uh, Joint Cloud Foundry team. And um, as uh, just like a lot of people today, we're here uh, to tell you about our journey on uh, um, implementing Cloud Foundry. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been working uh, at uh, at KLM in, in Ops for uh, about 10 years. <clears throat> and uh, for the past uh, year, I've been involved with the team that uh, implements uh, uh, Cloud Foundry within uh, Air France KLM. And uh, with me is uh, Fabien Lebrer. So I'm working in uh, Air France. I am a dev guy, so uh, not ops, sorry. And uh, I'm working in the software engineering. And for Nathan, I was a dev representative, so I represent all dev Air France and KLM. And I'm working in Air France since 1999. And so we have built a solution together, Air France KLM. Um, we're at Air France KLM. What do we do? We fly planes, right? That's our main, uh, main, main business. But now we're in a world that is so fast changing and moving, and <clears throat> we're not competing, um, but also uh, working together with other businesses that that um, implements technology um, in the current world, which is moving too fast for us. The, so we have to change our um, our world and change our game. And we have to move to digitalization. Um, so here, uh, I stole this uh, from a business presentation from Air France KLM, by the way. So this just shows that uh, all the move, all the uh, world around Air France KLM is, is uh, different. We have to compete with other businesses uh, for the same uh, market share. So um, Air France KLM has decided to, uh, to, to focus more um, on digitalization and uh, software. Also, to reduce uh, the technical debt that we might have if we don't uh, move along with the rest of the world. <clears throat> so, um, let me go back a few years back before I was um, um, the product owner of, uh, of this team. So, <clears throat> um, compared to the, to the previous presentation, so we started with, uh, with the uh, Cloud Foundry open source, um, I think it's about uh, three years ago. We started to uh, do investigation on that, but we were really, really struggling with, um, with um, the, the team, uh, with the skill level. Um, we had um, a lot of um, team members changing. Uh, there was not a good understanding of, of the um, technology itself. It was, it was difficult. So there was also a change in skill levels every time. Um, we had a really hard time to get it production ready. Uh, to get the organization around us uh, to, uh, to trust us to, uh, to get it into production. Uh, there was a, uh, no alignment at all with, with business apps, um, only used for prototyping only. It was, it was really hard. <clears throat> and um, so the management, they, they saw the need uh, in, in the moving, uh, uh, always changing world. They saw the need that we really need to do something. So we really need to... Um, um, to get it moving, and we decided to uh, to uh, to go for uh, the pivotal uh, pivotal solution, which are the uh, the um, the rock stars in this business actually <clears throat> at this moment. So, um, yeah, why pivotal? Uh, it's it's not a pivotal uh, pitch, of course, but I just want to mention that uh, why pivotal. It's uh, yeah, they they had a lot of uh, experience. They're the main contributors to the uh, uh, the open source uh, program, of course. And they had a lot of experience in implementing uh, Cloud Foundry, their pivotal Cloud Foundry, um, into enterprises. A lot of experience. Um, also, they, they came with um, the, the pivotal uh, Cloud Foundry um, <clears throat> product, comes with a lot of toolings and, and automation to, to make your life easier. So, looking at the skill set that which uh, uh, in the team, so the things that we need, um, we really could use the things that the Pivotal Cloud Foundry brought uh, <clears throat> into, our, uh, into our lives, into our organization. Um, and um, they can also deliver the, the, uh, <clears throat> the production support uh, whenever there is um, a big problem or a problem uh, might come up. They are willing to support us um, all the way. But what I really want to mention is about um, all these uh, innovative stuff in, in Pivotal Cloud Foundry itself is, is very, it's, it's great. 
it's awesome. All the tooling is great. It's making our life easier. Opsman, PAS, whatever. It's really great. But what I appreciate the most is the involvement of the, the team itself. So involvement of uh, I have everyone here and um, that's helping our, uh, my team in, in, in all aspects, not only technical aspects, but also in, in for me as a product owner in my uh, uh, product management uh, uh, roles and tasks. And his involvement or the involvement of Pivotal itself, not only Erwan, it's um, their involvement within the organization is really what makes it um, a real good partner for us to work with. <clears throat> So our platform journey started with, of course, the dojo. Everybody knows about the dojo. Um, yeah, their, their concept of I do it, and then you do it, or we do it together, and then you do it, it's yeah, focused on enablement. It, but to be honest, um, their lean disciplines and, 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 and everything as the core, core principles of enablement and the way of working, to be honest, it was very hard for us. <laughs> very hard. We're not used in pairing. We're not used uh, to do, um, I don't know, um, to, to do real uh, uh, agile methodologies. Um, we, we did agile methodologies, right? We, we did our stand-ups. We, uh, we, we tried to implement Scrum, so we did, we, we did our stuff. But, those, uh, those dojo period, uh, we stretch it uh, into eight weeks instead of uh, six. It was really hard for us. For me personally, I got, I got really stressed. But they try to learn, learn us something, something more than just installing things, uh, installing PCF. They, they, they try to teach us discipline. They try, the really core principles that focus on enablement and not just push uh, next, 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 and then it, it's, uh, it's done. <clears throat> And it's always in a customer-centric uh, uh, position from a customer-centric solution. It's always to deliver value to your customer. But we're not used to that. We're not used to have to talk to first to, uh, to, to every user and get their opinions and, and whatever before we implement something. So it's something that we need to learn. And the things, uh, the, the core principles of, of build and measure and learn, we really had to, to get used to that. Instead of just, oh, we're, we're uh, engineers, so we know how, uh, what to build, and, and we just, just move forward. So, <clears throat> something that we need to learn also. And from day one, their, uh, their focus was to automate it. Please, automate it. And our deliverable was um, not really big compared to uh, the previous presentation of 26 uh, foundations, but we had only had to, uh, to have seven foundations. But they started at the beginning, yeah, but we, if we install it manually, I've, I've, I'm done in one day. It's, uh, if if we, I have to build a pipeline, I have to learn concourse, it's such a pain for us, the learning curve is too high, but no. They really teach us, no, focus on automating it. So we started with, uh, with, with concourse, building a pipeline. Not me personally, but my, my team is, uh, is here. Um, so they started doing that. So we really needed to uh, <laughs> learn a lot. Uh, but because um, it really helped us, because after the first pipeline, just creating the first install, it is easy to, uh, to push it to the next, uh, next foundation or uh, next environment. And after that, you can build upon the pipeline to do other things than just install. Uh, I don't know. We're now, I think, uh, at the point that um, we do uh, uh, the, the small patches automated. So, we did it anyway, uh, so thank you for teaching us that, and thank you for the team that, uh, that implements that. And I'm really proud of my, of my team that, uh, that we're able to do that. You might wonder why I say Seven Wonders platform. I will come back to that later. Um, but Seven Wonders is uh, basically a, a board game. It's a strategic board game uh, compared to um, Age of Empires. I know if uh, the old guys out there that used to do uh, Play those games, but basically, it's um, it's uh, you have to um, gather resources and, and gather all the things before you can uh, create an, um, a society, uh, basically, and, and run from there. So this is this is what we have done. This is part of our journey: uh, get all the small uh, things, uh, gather people, gather uh, resources, um, 
order servers and whatever uh, to get where we are right now. Um, but to be in Air France KLM, it means it's um, that uh, we're not able to, uh, to work independently uh, as an island, basically. And we had to um, uh, integrate with a lot of uh, uh, the, the, the current systems within Air France KLM. So things like monitoring, uh, tools for troubleshooting, metrics, uh, logging, um, um, authentication uh, methods. It's, um, so we, we try to do that. It's, um, it's, it's really difficult because in an organization as Air France and KLM, all the things is, is managed by different departments. So, Again, we had to start talking with them. So we should contact them and, and, and start to uh, um, get all those things going. Again, a real pain for us, <laughs> really heavy. Uh, but again, uh, we, we managed to integrate with, uh, with, with uh, um, a lot of the existing uh, uh, systems and tools. Like uh, the, the, uh, we uh, managed to get Interscope working, uh, to get the metrics uh, from applications. Um, we are uh, able to send uh, the, the, the logging to an <clears throat> aggregated uh, log system within Air France KLM, which is managed by an, a different team. Um, and uh, we had to have a, um, the access to the platform itself, to PAS, and uh, <clears throat> to PAS basically had to go to an uh, authentication method, which is um, within Air France KLM. Um, so, now we have integrated with that, and all the users, uh, first from, we moved from creating local users, uh, now we use uh, Ping Federer to uh, connect to the, uh, to the platform. So you get authenticated uh, on the platform directly. So here's a small picture of uh, Seven Wonders, the board game. So we started really from zero, from, from um, Nothing. Yeah, basically with uh, with the uh, OpenStack, uh, um, I mean open source uh, Cloud Foundry. But this journey of of, of pivotal Cloud Foundry, we started with nothing. <clears throat> but with support of uh, of, of uh, my uh, the, the product manager and everything uh, in uh, within Air France KLM, all the different departments also, we started uh, to uh, get this project going. Um, we get physical servers across three data centers. And after the six weeks of Dojo, we have installed uh, seven foundations across three data centers, uh, which is basically also after the uh, Dojo period, which is uh, with ended uh, in the end of March, beginning of April, we were uh, operational and we were live. <clears throat> it's, um, it's an on-prem solution with, um, on, on, on vSphere. Um, it's production grade, a dual site design, uh, according to the reference architecture of uh, of uh, uh, Pivotal um, with an um, availability zones, three availability zones, availability zones design. So for uh, HA purposes, <clears throat> and we uh, we try to implement as much as possible of the reference architecture. So um, we are feature proof also. <clears throat> for um, um, for monitoring and, um, and alerting, <clears throat> we had to integrate uh, with, uh, with the current uh, solution at Air France KLM. Um, so we could try to combine some stuff which is already uh, within uh, PCF, uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry. And um, this is an example how we integrate it with uh, the, the alerting mechanism of, uh, used by Air France KLM, which is uh, Centrion. So we, uh, we implemented HealthWatch as uh, um, as um, uh, platform uh, monitoring, and um, <clears throat> talking with the, with the teams of the monitoring team, we came um, uh, to a, a system that, that can send uh, the, uh, the metrics from HealthWatch uh, to Prometheus, and from there on, they created a bridge to Centrion, and then and now we have also alerting me mechanism for our platform. But this is just one of the uh, uh, integrations uh, examples that, uh, that we uh, did. <coughs> But, as, as I already mentioned, um, who are we doing it for? Um, my main client is uh, the developer the, themselves, so word to the developer. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, maybe <coughs> just before to continue, a small question. Who is in the room is not a developer? Please raise your hand. 
Not much? Sure? OK. Have you already asked to a developer what is his dream, what is his want? Have you done this job already? No, never? OK. Because in fact, for developers, all is simple. We are in the business world, so in uh, English, it's more the clear beer. I think you know the, the series? Yes? Yes. Because for you, sometimes the developer, yes, is dream. He's dreaming dream a lot, in fact. What he wants, the developer, is simple. He wants to code. Code, but code with the language he wants. Coding, but the database he wants. The middleware he wants. And he wants to be able to deploy autonomously his application without any problem, of course. I have a new language, I want to use it because it's fun. Yes. Do you know Kotlin? Go. Yeah, very fine languages. But of course, infrastructure layer, not for me. Paperwork, not too. If I need to plan ahead, disk, server, router, IP range, no, I don't want to touch. No, no, no. Install VM, operating system, no. And of course, for me, we have delivered a nice platform, and of course, there is backup. Well, you raised me the question. I want to know why. But the more important, yes, I have you know, designed my application, and of course, if something fails in life, please don't call me. Yeah? OK, so it's still a dream, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, we try, maybe we try to say, okay, this dream, we want it, it's possible to implement it. So we have started to collect requirements. We have done some interview survey to the developers, to the applica application operation. And at the end, we have uh, qualified more 100 requirements. Of course, if I push all requirements, I say to Nathan, hey, please, tomorrow, I have this platform. It was a little bit difficult for him. So we define a subset, only 34 requirements. So, to start, we have called this requirement the MVP, minimum value product, to have a real plus value for the developer. Most of them concern the core feature. Yes, we need to have something to install, you know, it's a little bit difficult. But the good plus value for us is a service broker. So, we have just put in the bucket two. Yes, two. Yeah. After that, we say, OK, now we have the platform. So, we want to enrich him. So we have started to define a new subset, 20. And most of them is based on the extended service catalog, and we want to add 10 more. Yes, I know it's hard for you, but. <laughs> <laughs> let's yes, let's talk uh, after the. So today we are here. And of course, the goal is to continue to enrich the platform and to have a big service catalog. If I come back to the first MVP, so in our France, KLM, we have uh, services already. Um, provided by our operation. And we have put the focus only on two, they are in green, Postgre and Redis. So when I want to deploy my NAS application, okay, I have a nice um, cell services. I click and uh, instant, uh, directly I have my PostgreSQL. Oh, sorry. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have my pro, uh, instant, uh, on the fly, I have my PostgreSQL databases. But of course, my application is so simple. I need other services. And for that, unfortunately, I need to release the, the legacy way, so mail, issue, things like that. Just to illustrate, for example, I wanted Mongo. So we raised the question to operation, hey, I want a databases for my application. And OK, they say, OK, for dev, we will have in four weeks. But I wanted another one for acceptance, no? Yes or no? Or oh, is it enough? <laughs> no, it's not enough. And they say, no problem. One, one week more. But I want the live, too. Yes, no problem. One week more. OK, so six weeks to have for, uh, for live. So of course, as developer, what I want? I want to have my all services in self-service mode. So of course, I click, and I am very happy. Oops, sorry. But 
uh, with now with uh, we want hybrid services, so we want uh, to provide some. Well, we want to get services the benefit of the cloud. So there is a nice feature in the cloud. So of course, if I can just click in Cloud Foundry and get it, yes, very fun. I like the web services, self services. And of course, so if you are more technical, you know that is based on open service broker API. So okay, now we have a lot of services, so it's great. But now what we need to do? Train the people. So to train the people at the beginning, when you started, we say, okay, we need to define a training one day and explain to the developer how to use a platform. Yes, of course. But when we discover the platform, we say, hey, in fact, we have just to say CF push and it's down. Oh, too simple. <laughs> so we say, okay, we are going to do some cookbooks some git line, and maybe it will be enough to start. Yes, right? But if I want to use really the benefit of the platform, it's not enough. For example, if I want to use microservices, if I want to use Spring Boot with other features inside, yes, we need to do more. And for that, instead of to do traditional training, we say, OK, we are going to do AFKLL developer events and push information by user communities. And for that, thanks to uh, Pivotal, because they uh, have a nice evangelist, as I said, for example, Jacob, no, Jakub, sorry, and a uh, very good guy about microservices. And when he went to your company and explained, developers are very, 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 I don't know why, <laughs> but very happy. So of course, as said by uh, Nathan, we have three data centers. So. <laughs> He has done only one, but he has done one in Valbonne, another one in Toulouse, and another one in Amsterdam. So three times, so it's a big investment for us and for Pivotal, so thank you very much. Another one in Paris also is going to be organized. Yeah. Uh, an office there, so. <laughs> Little bit complex. But uh, for the communication, it's very good. And the investment, we get very benefit. So, okay, we have 20 people, but now we have existing application, I think it's your case too. And we want to do the cloudification. This term, I think, not exist. But we have more than 1,000 applications today. And when you go to some conference where they say, hey, you need to be cloud native, you need to follow the 12 factor. Everybody knows the 12 factor here? Yes? A little bit complex when you do migration. Huh? You need to follow that. If you are not aware about this, you have proposed to you to follow one other session raised by, done by KSC West at the Spring One two years ago. And it's very fine because they say, okay, there is pattern, anti-pattern, so 30 minutes, and I think we learned very well the 12 factor. I propose to focus on the process part. What is the anti-pattern of the process? No? Anti-pattern is the NFS. No NFS, no network file storage, of course. But just Keep in mind one thing. All your applications are not Facebook or Twitter. Yeah? So to explain a little bit more. So I have a nice application, it's stateless, so no problem. Free application, free instances, nice. I need to, store, to have storage, so for that, of course, object storage. And by the way, I've created a very nice application my customer can be worldwide. I can have one billion of users. Perfect. But one thing to pick in mind, we are doing migration. If we are doing that, yes, it's nice. But your migration cost increase a lot. Maybe in this case, why not to stay on NFS? Yes, of course, you are not going to the right wide. But on B2B application, your company, your staff, maybe, is enough. And by this way, you reduce the cost of the migration. Agree? Yeah? Nice. So, Pivotal understands that. And for that, they say, OK, there is a 12-factor uh, line in hand. But in the other hand, we are going to create a new service broker, the volume services. And by the way, what? Just check in the marketplace, it's existing. Create the services very easily. And in fact, just to bind my application. 
So, okay, it's not 12 factor, but for immigration can be enough. Just maybe one message more is keep in mind, in fact, there is 12 factor, but to use Cloud Foundry, four are only mandatory. Thank you. And Nathan. Right. <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, our journey, we're still on that journey, by the way. We're not uh, as far uh, as I'm concerned, we're not there yet. Um, but that's by basically the next slide. <clears throat> the challenges that we have right now, the challenges for the team, the challenges for the, uh, 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 the organization itself, is um, <coughs> one of the biggest challenges that we uh, come across uh, during uh, this uh, one-year journey is that um, we, I think from, we are uh, one organization starting 2004. And we're now in 2018. But do you think that all processes are aligned? Are we using the same tooling? No, not at all. So we've been, uh, yeah, you do the math, 14, 14 years later. So it's, um, uh, some of the things look similar, but a lot of things are, um, are, are, are so different. The teams are different. The mentality is different. The organization, Air France, KLM, but not even Air France, KLM, within KLM itself. The way how department works, um, uh, supporting departments that we are depending on. Um, they, they use different processes. Uh, the, the one department wants you to use JIRA to get requests, wants you to use mail or even uh, forms on, in Word. I'm not, not kidding. <clears throat> but uh, at least at least uh, with, uh, with this product, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, we know that um, I want to use the analogy of, uh, of, uh, of a fast car that we're driving right now on a, on a, a bit of a, a dirt road. <clears throat> at least we have already bought the car, right? So it's working fine and it can go fast, going very really fast. That gives us the time to concentrate on everything else around it. So concentrate on the road. So we can, <clears throat> we can, um, uh, we can try to constraint on the uh, organizational uh, restrictions that we have right now. So um, uh, that's more uh, all related to the DevOps implementation, uh, the technical restrictions, which is now uh, as an example that um, there, are, there are no service brokers to use uh, backend services or we're not allowed to, to use the APIs that is currently uh, running. Um, but also we'll focus on the processes, the processes within um, a big organization such as uh, Air France KLM. Um, but in mind, while doing that, we have to try to not be an island again, just to really focus only on our thing. Uh, no, this is really what we want, and uh, please give us, uh, or just please work with us, and, and stuff like that, and really focus on that. We have to be careful to, be, to, uh, <laughs> to operate like that again. Um, but this also gives us the, the, uh, the means, uh, implementing this, gives us the means to standardize a lot of things, uh, processes like self-services, uh, provisioning of, of, of your environment, so not only within, uh, uh, within uh, Cloud Foundry, <clears throat> but, um, but also to implement uh, uh, service brokers uh, in the future. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, to... Uh, drive uh, self-services and, and, and DevOps. Are we there yet? Not at all. Far from it. <clears throat> but we keep on moving. So uh, I found this, uh, this, uh, uh, this thing on, uh, on, on the internet which, is, which says about present continuous. It means, it means you're here, but you're not there. You're not where you, went, uh, where you want to be. You have to keep moving. You have to, you have to go forward. So <clears throat> um, currently, uh, my team uh, are focusing on three things. So we want to, uh, to um, bring more features to our clients. So we are focusing please, uh, on please. the service catalog. <laughs> catalog. Yeah, but no, it's also an answer, right? So um, if you want, uh, want me to uh, PCF set coffee, then I might not uh, implement that feature for you. So, <clears throat> but also concentrate on the uh, platform itself. So enhance the platform. Um, we want to uh, work on, on automating uh, a lot more stuff. Um, backup restore, um, working on um, uh, disaster recovery uh, uh, procedures, uh, so. <clears throat> and also on operations, uh, other operations uh, tasks, such as uh, guiding team, uh, guiding development teams on the platform to use the platform better, uh, to make use uh, of the platform uh, correctly. So, 
the, the title of this presentation was Sky's the Limit, but it was. It's not anymore. <laughs> it's just where you put your bar. If you want to reach the sky, yeah, I can go to the Eiffel Tower. I'm already in the sky, but it's not there. We're not there yet. So just like in the, uh, um, the keynote this morning, we talk about the space. So that's where we want to go, it's, uh, in space. So what, what's next? We keep onboarding dev teams. So currently, we have um, a lot of teams, more than uh, uh, over 50. 50 uh, apps? Uh, 50 apps, yeah. 50 yeah. apps on, uh, on non-production, and we want to uh, really guide them into, into production-ready uh, status. But also implementing PCF, we want to drive DevOps. We want to drive other departments, uh, operations departments. Uh, we have uh, multiple layers of, of operations departments, but also development. We want to drive them into DevOps. It means that because this platform already gives you the, directly the capability of to do your own self-service. You provision your own uh, environment. It means that uh, you also have to learn, you have to teach them to, to be responsible for their apps, for their environment. <clears throat> and developers don't want to do that. They want to concentrate on the apps. But yeah, yes. still. <laughs> so this, this um, uh, implementing PCF, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, we want to enable the transformation uh, by implementing this technology, right? So the future, it's just open. Hybrid cloud, maybe, in the future. But it's nothing blocking us from that, right? Uh, <clears throat> the standardizing components, like the open service uh, uh, broker APIs. Yeah, why not? Let's do that. <clears throat> so sky was the limit, not anymore. <laughs> but we also want to celebrate. Uh, so I want to ask uh, my team to come up, to come up here to uh, take a picture. We will take a, to a picture together. So um, <clears throat> as, a, as a last moment, <laughs> please come up <laughs> to my PM. <laughs> AJ, my architect. <laughs> 